sorry I look so a little jaundiced in the video. <laughs> so I saw more slump, but um, I'm, kind of, I'm a junior. I'm studying journalism and a minor in Arabic. And I'm very excited to be here today. I'm open to talk after this about anything related to summer experiences and more Hakan in general. Hi everyone, welcome to Chapel Hill. My name is Ty, class of 2020. I majored in computer science <laughs> and double minored in anthropology and business. Um, I work in Durham now for a tech company, uh, my tech company, and um, <laughs> I previously served on the uh, Chapel Hill Town Council. And that's me in a nutshell. Welcome everyone, my name is Nigel Parker. Uh, I'm a junior class of 25. I'm majoring in Management and Society in the Sociology Department. Uh, and I have two minors, so a minor in PPE, so Philosophy, Politics, and Economics. Um, and my other minor is in History. Um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and I'm very glad to be here to speak with you about my mentor and our relationship. Um, and so it's great to see you, and welcome to Chapel Hill. Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Nikki Shim Masani, class of 2015, so I guess the oldest person on this panel. Uh, I studied political science and business at UNC, and now I run my own fashion company called Sani. Hi everyone, my name is Nina Fisher. I am from Guelph, Ontario. I am a psychology and entrepreneurship psychology major, entrepreneurship minor. Um, I work in the study abroad office here as well as for the entrepreneurship program. Um, so I'm happy to talk to you about any of that as well as my summers, welcome. All right, Nina, why don't you just hold on to the mic. All right. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna ask Emily and Frankie to be our mic runners for you all. Um, and if you'll raise your hands, I'll call on you and then maybe uh, one of our two mic runners will come. We'll do sort of a dramatic thing. Um, you're welcome to introduce yourself, since you all are all still getting to know each other, just very quickly, your name and where you're from, something like that, and then a quick question. So, anybody have a question? Anywhere. There we go. Now we're back here. Back to back. Yes. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm George. I'm going to North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics, and I have a question for you. Um, so starting your company is obviously a very hard process and so um, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to pursue entrepreneurship and biotechnology um, at UNC Chapel Hill or another university. But hopefully UNC Chapel Hill. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my question to you is how has Moorhead King helped you start this company? Have they given you any advice? And have they even provided a, an additional seed funding for you um, to start your company? Yeah, thanks for kicking it off with the first question. So Ty will also be able to speak to this because he has a thriving company as well. Um, but coming to UNC shattered all of my preconceived notions and led to this company. I would not have told you in a million years that I would be running a fashion brand, but what coming here made me learn was to look at the problems and the opportunity context instead of just the solutions. And so for me, you know, one of those things was working a summer with Corey Ford, one of our alums. So he was running a startup accelerator focused on early stage media companies in San Francisco. And I had never seen what a startup really was before that. So that was my introduction. I then went on to be able to intern for Sally Krawcheck, who has a professional women's network that was really in its infancy at the time. So another startup experience. Um, and since then, I mean, you asked about seed funding, things like that. Some of our investors are Moorhead Kane alums introduced to us by the foundation. Some of our biggest advisors are Moorhead Kane alums. I think consistently what this program does is, you know, we've talked over and over again about how the people are the most important part. And I think when you're running a company, it is all about having the right support network. And that's really what this has been. So even if I didn't get introduced to certain alums or, or peers while I was at Carolina, it is a network that stays with you for life. And so that's what I've found over and over again. Ty, you wanna tack on to that? Um, sure, uh, so similar to Nikki, my first exposure was another alum, uh, his name is Calvin Young. He still in the Bay. I think he's successfully exited three companies. At this point, so I was able to intern uh, at his startup, and the Moorhead does have a summer where they fund you to work on your own company. Um, 
so me and my co-founder, another scholar, who's now also my wife, um, <laughs> worked together for a summer, uh, started the company during, that was the summer between our junior and senior year, and that summer really taught us how to do customer discovery, they gave us the resources, um, and the alumni network really helped in that process, and that gave us the confidence to really you know, dedicate, or I guess, whatever the word is, to work full time on it after graduation, and I think the financial piece of it cannot be understated as well. If I didn't have the more it, I definitely would have gone and like been a consultant, work at Google or something to have a salary to pay back my debt. <laughs> Uh, but not having any of that really gave me the freedom to make the decision uh, to start a company after college. Hi, my name is Ali Slack. I'm from Matthews, North Carolina. Um, for the mentees, what piece of advice have your mentors given you that's like just been most impactful? Like, what's been the best part of having a mentor? Yeah, so I got the mic from, from Ty. Um, the best part about having a mentor. So me and Ty have been, been we've had a relationship since last, uh, at least this fall. Um, but I've known Ty uh, for a while now. I've seen Ty around. Uh, he's a very big personality. Um, very involved in, in the Warrior community. And so um, I remember when I first met Ty, it was my uh, sophomore year for the preparation for my civic collaboration summer. Um, he was one of the alumni who came back to help uh, prepare us for that summer. Um, and hearing about his experiences um, on Chapel Hill Town Council and starting his own business um, have been really inspiring. And so um, when I had the chance to be his mentee uh, for this, this past couple of months, it's been great. Um, you know, we talk about a range of things. Uh, so I think, I think Emily did a really good job pairing us together. I'm a pretty reserved person. I'm pretty sort of chill, laid back, and I would not say Ty is reserved in any sort of sense of it. Um, and so, just sort of personally as, as, as a person growing and, you know, encouraging me to put myself out there and be a uh, sort of more outgoing person is one thing. Um, that's sort of a subtle way that, that Ty has definitely helped me. But then, also professionally, I'm starting uh, to prepare for my professional experience summer uh, coming up. It's my last hurricane summer. But a lot of that is working with the more connections that you have, the alumni connections that you have to figure out what, what is the best uh, place for you to do an internship or something uh, of that nature. So Ty has been really helpful in just figuring out, honing in on what it is I want to, to get out of my professional experience, what it is that I, um, would be most optimal for me to sort of experience, um, to set up sort of my life after college. Um, so that's that's just a little bit, and I'll get it to some of the other inventions that I can speak, but uh, yeah, it's been, it's been an amazing experience for me. Yeah, Hassan's always really good at just reminding me that it's never that serious. And I feel like when you're in school or the, like your whole identity for the past 18 years has been a student, so a lot of times you can get so wrapped up in like, oh my goodness, if I this internship with this company and this, I can't have this job. And t um, Hassan's just really good at explaining to me like it's not that serious. And a lot of times we can just put a lot of weight in things that are so temporary. Um, at the end of our lives, we'll look back and remember the memories made with our friends and our family and the time we invested into who we are as people rather than what we do professionally, how much money we've made or things like that. Not to say that's not great, but he's a really good reminder that, because in college it's just competitive, so he's a, he really reminds me a lot that it's just not that serious. You know, go out, have fun, and the rest will follow. Hi, my name's Emily. I'm from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. They both said, actually, Nikki and I met two years ago at, uh, you were a guest speaker in my shoe for my first uh, entrepreneurship class. And I don't think I've told you this, but I was like, oh my gosh, this woman is so cool. I would <laughs> really love to talk to her. And it's a massive class, like 300 students. And everyone wants to talk to the speakers. And so I waited and caught you as you were like exiting the building. And I was like, your story was so cool. I would love to speak to you again sometime. Lo and behold, we were matched together this year. Um, and I think like you've been really great at helping me celebrate my wins throughout the year, the small things and the big things, and just like really, really helpful to have perspective um, from an entrepreneur who has done many of the things that I hope to do, um, and also just giving that perspective and that encouragement. Um, and then also just to like be confident in myself and my skills and what I think I want to do, and instead of 
second guessing, like just going for it. Um, and from an entrepreneur perspective, like that's really what it's all about. Um, and so, yeah, that's been one of my greatest joys from learning from you. Uh, this is for the mentees. Has being part of the mentoring program at all caused you to consider maybe being a mentor yourself in the future? Yeah, I can start. Um, absolutely. I hope I get to be an alumni mentor. Um, I'm graduating in May, and so I feel like as a senior, I've taken on a lot of mentorship roles in the pockets of campus that I'm in. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed being able to share my perspective. Um, and it's helpful to see like what that could eventually grow into in five, six, seven years down the line. Um, so absolutely, yeah, I think the Moorhead Kane has given me so much and I would be doing a strong service to the community if I didn't also um, give back some of what I've received. And you might as well give the mic to Ty, who's been on both sides now as well. So <laughs> once you're done, I will speak to both cool. sides. Cool, cool. Um, Dude, I'm, I'm really just trying to make it through right now. Like, <laughs> no, but I, I uh, <laughs> absolutely, I, I think echoing uh, sort of what Nina was saying, um, just the piece about uh, there's so much that this program pours into you, and so it would, it would, I'd be remiss to not sort of pour back into it. Um, I think one of the best things about this uh, program is it's, it's sort of a lifelong program that like after you graduate, um, sort of this is the, the meat, the current uh, scholars are the meat of the experience, but afterwards there's such a rich community um, and family as, as Kevin was saying in her videos this is sort of the family part of it where you can start create, creating those connections uh, with, with the people that come after you so yeah absolutely uh, yeah I was on both sides I was a mentee Gil whose last name I can't remember to save my life Holland uh, was my mentor uh, we had a great relationship I just am bad with names uh, last name specifically, but Gil was a homie, uh, helped me a lot throughout my, I think we started my junior year maybe, um, so he, I had him as a mentor for two years and obviously I've kept up that relationship uh, and similar to Nigel's perspective, I think the amount that Gil poured into me just made me feel, I don't want to say a sense of obligation, but a, a strong desire uh, to give back, so when the opportunity came to be a mentor, uh, I was telling Nigel, I don't know what you put on that form to deserve <laughs> me as a, a mentor, but um, yeah, it's been a phenomenal experience being on the other side of it as well. Yeah, I agree. They said it all best. I would also be a mentor. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long series. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, taking notes. Okay, because I'm taking notes. Okay, there's a question here. Oh, we'll let you run. Something's gone. Get your physical vigor on. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Dia from Bethesda, Maryland, and I was just wondering, like, when you're getting advice from your mentor, like, what are you talking about, and like, what type of advice, and like, what domain is it in? Um, when I get advice, usually what we do is monthly meetings, and there's typically a subject that Emily will send out. You don't have to stick to it, but it does kind of give you some good inspo. Last month was SMART goals, um, which is kind of good as a junior, senior, like all of us are, just kind of think about the future. So you can kind of start with that. Usually, it, you kind of become friends, so it's like, what happened this week? And then you give them the rundown, the debrief, and then they, from there, kind of give advice, or it doesn't always have to be advice, too. It can kind of be just a good conversation, but um, if you have a specific question, you can always go to them and in that, but there's also set topics that you can cover each month. Yeah, so definitely, definitely the friendship sort of builds, uh, but I think it ranges, so any time I meet with Ty, it could be about anything. I mean, some we've gone into meetings without, like, I guess I haven't really had anything specific to ask Ty, but just talking about him, to him, and his, about his experiences, and us sort of bonding through like a more friendship um, level has been sort of part of the mentorship experience. Um, but it's been a range. So it's been like, like I remember the last time we met, there was a very specific thing that I needed for my for my uh, upcoming PE summer. I'm um, like, I need a connection in Chicago. Like, if you have that, that's what I need. Um, and then obviously we talk about, about other things, but um, you know it's ranged from from that some very specific to like um, you know personal relationship advice and, and talking about uh, that aspect of life that we don't uh, typically get a, get time to discuss or learn about um, in sort of a formal setting. Um, so it's it's a big range. 
Yeah, I would say again, um, a really cool part about the program is just like this layer of trust that is already established. Um, and so having a successful business owner and entrepreneur that I can be like, okay, what was the riskiest part of starting? What's the hardest part? How did you get funding? What was your next step? Questions that like you maybe wouldn't just ask anyone. Um, and then also for me as I'm graduating in May and have been navigating my post-grad opportunities, it's been amazing to have your perspective um, and a sounding board to kind of workshop like my fears, my goals, what might make sense, what doesn't make sense. Um, we met just a few days ago and Nikki gave me a list um, where I could find like really cool startups that I'm interested in um, and like the best ways to go about connecting with those people. And so, yeah, it's just like really, really great perspective that you don't, you don't really have to filter what you're thinking because that's exactly what they're there for. Hi, my name is Tassim Daya. I'm from Toronto. And I have a question for both the mentors. I'm curious, how is the research triangle or like North Carolina area for building a company? I know it's probably an industry specific, but just generally like network resources or, or whatever else is important to like a company, how is that? Well, cost of living is a good start. It is better than uh, New York, San Francisco, those places. But I think what's really cool is actually the, the pandemic at least changed a lot. Um, of what it was like for us. So first of all, it was so much easier to get things done virtually. And then a lot of people were moving from places like New York and other cities over here because of just, you know, the, the what they could get for their money over here. So actually, uh, pre pandemic, we had a hard time building certain members of our team. So we were flying to New York every single month to meet with those team members and it was getting really expensive. But over the course of the pandemic, we were actually able to find a technical designer and some other people like that who had moved from New York in the past couple of years. And so now it's been a much better place to actually start a, a fashion brand in particular. And North Carolina really has a history of, of textiles and you know a strong history in textiles. So for us at least it's it's worked really well, but you know you can travel wherever, whenever you need to, and so that's also been um, an important part of, of what we've still been doing. Yeah, I can't echo the cost of living thing enough. Um, we haven't raised any venture capital because um, we like our equity, and I remember in the beginning we were paying ourselves, I think it was $750 a month that we were living off of each. Uh, all three co-founders lived together, um, we still live together four years later. Um, not that we have to, we choose to at this point. Um, but yeah, the cost of living, I think it's a huge thing. Uh, if you do choose to raise money, I think, like Nikki said, the pandemic really changed how VCs view funding startups in other locations. It's a lot easier now to get funding uh, in the triangle. Hiring talent is a lot easier. We just hired our seventh person and comparable salaries like here versus SF or New York, leagues different. Um, so the ability to grow your company uh, organically through growth here is a lot easier. Talent pool is, is there. And then I think the other big thing is the startup network in the Triangle is really strong and it's a lot easier to get access to like our version of like a Mark Zuckerberg, right? So we've had 10, 15 really successful exits in the Triangle and you're always maybe two degrees of separation away from getting a meeting with any of those people. So you can actually have a sit down conversation with and Neil Chala, who sold his company for $300 million, um, and he's willing to have a conversation with you as a new startup person on the scene. Um, just like being out in the Bay a little bit and seeing the community over there versus here just seems much more tight-knit and accessible. Cool, thank you. Um, I think the Morehead Kane, um, all four summers have definitely are definitely impactful for discovering her passion in very 
non-traditional ways. Um, you do outdoor leadership and then civic collaboration. You can do GP or PE uh, interchangeably. But I think ultimately, it's up to you to discover your passion. It's up to you to decide if you want to kind of carve, what path you want to carve out. A lot of people say like, oh, you have a lot of time in college to explore, but I don't, I don't think that you really, it's four years, you really don't. I think we just have to stop doing life stopping at college, you know? It doesn't stop at the four years. So start what you can now, explore what you can now, take every class you think is fun. But understand that life goes on after this. And so plant the seeds, but it can water after. That's very abstract and kind of, it can sound meaningless, but I think that's kind of something I've been thinking about lately. It's just like, as I'm approaching the back half of college, like, oh my goodness, life really has just begun. So Moorhead is really great at supporting you in that. And I go to advising appointments, not when I should, but when my like back is against the wall, I don't know what to do. I'm like, look, can you cut a check in a week? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Um, but I definitely think that this is just a great, Moorhead really supports you in discovering who you are right now, and it's up to you what you do with that from this point on. All that seconded. Uh, I think the one thing I have to add is the Moorhead gives you the ability and opportunity to experience so many different environments. Um, like I interned for an insurance company in Beijing all the way to um, you know working for a startup in the Bay. So just experiencing just a ton of different things. And that's what college really is all about, is testing all these different environments, variables, and finding you know what sticks out to you, what makes you feel that fire inside, what do you care about. Um, and I think there's no better opportunity in the world to experience as much in such a short period of time uh, as the Moorhead. Because not only do you have the ability to experience that yourselves, but you also have a class of, I don't even know how big the classes are nowadays, but you know, 70, um, you have 74 <laughs> other people also doing that same thing, and you can also learn from them and their experiences. So it really is a priceless opportunity. Really selling. Yeah, no, I think, definitely second all that, I, I think the biggest thing for me is, is uh, the freedom of choice. Um, I think, so to speak about the, the financial piece for a little bit, I mean, you can't sort of over understate like how much uh, that, that really frees up your life. I think for different people, it sort of has different impact, but for me, um, it has been a significant uh, source of pride for my family, but then also significant uh, sort of in your day to day, you're thinking like, I don't have to work if I don't, you know, want to, um, and that's that's a really big thing that a lot of college students don't uh, don't have the opportunity to do. So that's that's one piece. Um, the other piece I'll share about is uh, when I was in your shoes, um, I visited after sort of my virtual final this weekend. Um, I visited, and I was the only one here, uh, but David Greer was here. I don't, I don't know where David is, so I don't, but um, David was here, and he he asked me, um, you know, what is your dream job? Like, what what is it you want to do? What is uh, dream up something, anything. Um, and uh, he was like, this is the place where we can make it happen. Um, and that has really stuck with me um, and has really been sort of what I think about going into any opportunity that the Maury Kane provides me. Um, and I, I can say that that's really been, uh, that's been true. Um, anything that I've wanted to do, anything that I've uh, even had, had the slightest interest in doing, um, you can meet with an advisor, you can meet with anyone on the Maury faculty, um, and they'll make it happen. And it's been amazing. Yeah, for, for me, it made me realize that passion isn't always a fixed thing. And, you know, it gave me the confidence to figure it out when I was in these moments of I have no idea what to do. Um, so leaving college, I went to work in federal consulting, partially because I loved my time in student government over here. I thought, you know, there would, there would be some parallels. I quit my first job in six months because I realized that was not what I wanted to do. And in that next moment of what am I passionate about? How am I gonna get another job when you know I quit my first one in six months? It was all of this that, that made me realize, no, I can, I can do it. I went back and worked for Corey Ford, who I'd interned with, and you know everything runs its course. And so when that had run its course, and I was like, now what do I do? the seeds of Sani started to get planted. And so I think, you know, my path has not been linear at all. The passions have not been linear at all. But really what happened here is I have the confidence and, and I know I'm going to be able to figure it out. 
Yeah, this is always like a great question because I think Moorhead King as a whole just is opportunity, period. There's so much that you can do that you don't even know you're gonna want to do or is possible. I, I always get very nostalgic on finals weekend because I, I took a gap year after um, receiving the Moorhead because of the Moorhead. Um, and I had no idea what my next four summers were going to be like, nor did I know how they were going to connect. And as a senior, I like see a very clear line. Um, so like I studied abroad in Paris and I was able to enhance my French learning. And then I went to Indonesia and was doing coral reef restoration. But in that summer, I became really passionate about meditation. And then this past winter break, I used a Lovelace Fund to do research on meditation. And now I'm writing my honors thesis on it. And then last summer, I worked for a startup in San Francisco, also through the Moorhead, also working with an alum. Um, and so it's really like, you, you just have no idea what is going to unfold in front of you. And I, I just cannot describe it enough. I want to real quick add, you also put like, get out what you put in. A lot of people, not a lot, but some people do do this as just a check on check day to pick up and they leave. And then they're disappointed when they graduate college and it's like, oh, I didn't really have that more experience. But each of you have such a great calling over your life, whatever it is, and have like that, like literally the, the world is, what is it, your oyster, whatever the saying is? Like <laughs> you can do literally whatever you absolutely believe in. The only difference between you and Bill Gates is that like, he's 80, right? He had time to do it, like <laughs> you genuinely can do whatever you want. And if you are willing to invest the time into doing it, invest, into this into the scholarship the same way as investing into you i promise you you will see the results tenfold like every time i meet someone they're like oh my goodness your summer was so cool or i'm talking about their cool summers because they are actually investing back into more head what more heads putting into them so if you treat it like just a check it will literally just be a check but if you take just the extra mile of speaking with advisors and talking with your with your peers and networking across and above you will be so mind blown by just the amount of opportunities that open up right there in front of your face and it won't be a matter of like if I have opportunities, but just which one. Like, what do I want to do right now? So, yeah. What a perfect way to end that.